Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, I'm currently actually on the server that I have set up um, for, I forget how to actually show the server, but I am on the server, so I'm actually in creative. Um, and I've been doing some work on the server to get some ideas going. Uh, since I have this world up um, currently, and it's up for another like 20 days or something like that, I figured I'd use it kind of as a up-to-date testing world to be able to try and build some stuff here to get some ideas going. Um, because we're currently tackling, I'm currently tackling trying to figure out how to do this stuff here. Uh, trying to figure it out. I'm not really sure how I want to go about doing this. The original idea was doing a uh, floating chunk of land, and I'm not sure if I actually want to do that or not. Um, but I have some things that I want to address with you really quickly based off of the world tours and stuff, and I know I'm going to... I've had some questions on it, and I know I'm going to continue getting questions. So first things first is the texture pack. Um, I had a few questions about the texture pack, if I'm going to be releasing it, or if it is released, or what have you. And I currently, no, I'm not releasing it quite yet. And the reason being is I'm working on getting it to a, uh, a making it a bit more fleshed out uh, before offering a download. And the main reason for that is because I don't want to have a lot of different versions floating around. Um, and I, I also don't want to release the texture pack knowing next week or then or in two weeks I'm going to be re-releasing it because I've updated a texture or two or something I want to be able to I'm going to sit down and try and do some quick video like a quick video this week to be able to focus on the texture pack uh, to get a lot done because I have I mean I have all the wood plank textures still to do I want to do the stone the stone bricks um, I want to do I just have a lot of stuff that I actually want to get done on it before releasing it I just it's mainly because I just don't want to have a lot of variation out there I want if I'm going to offer a download for you guys I want you to have um, a decent amount of time to play on an updated version of it and so I, I just don't want to constantly ha be having to upload it because on my internet it does take like an hour or something or something like ridiculous to actually upload it since it when it whenever it gets to a bigger file size I should say so that is the texture pack. Um, I do have an idea about um, kind of going the sort of BWO route with his texture pack, offering a work in progress thing. Um, but that is if I actually do set up a Patreon. Um, I've been thinking about setting up a Patreon to be able to sort of just support m me putting more time into this series and uh, YouTube in general um, to be able to continue building um, our world up and to be able to also then have more of a reason to put even more time into it, um, if that makes sense. And uh, the texture pack is definitely something that is even more outside of this. Like, I, I usually just work on it for myself when I find a texture that I want to change. And right now I have a lot of textures I want to change, but they're not affecting my building a ton. So, like, our andesite is pretty, pretty much fleshed out and done. Same with diorite. Um, and so I, I like stone, I want to change and I have an idea of how to change it, but, um, it's not really affecting me too much. So that's why I just don't work on it as quickly. Um, and so Patreon would be a good, um, motivator to just constantly like have a time throughout the week to be able to settle down, work on the texture pack, get a decent like work in progress update out for anyone who is like at that level or whatever. It'd probably be base level. I don't know. I've never done Patreon, so uh, I really have no idea what that's all about. So, yeah. Um, and so there's that update. So, yeah. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to discuss really quickly is uh, I may be doing some more time-lapse based videos uh, here in the future and just building stuff up um, and not really discussing it. Uh, it may be doing just like random time-lapses, just like a... 10 minute video or something like that of building in this world uh, just to get another video out but also get even more work done uh, because I do work in this world outside of recording like this um, and so I figured it'd just be another way for you guys to see what's happening in the world um, and keep up to date. 
that is, I think, all that I have in terms of updates. Uh, what I wanted to show you really quickly on this server why we're on here is because down here, I've been working on figuring out how to go about making this. And I was originally gonna be doing a sort of floating area here and a floating like piece of land that's been chunked out of the world. But I, I don't really think I wanna do that anymore. Uh, I think I may do more just all of the houses are individual or they're a part of a larger chunk of stone. I'm, I honestly, I don't really know. I'm, I'm struggling for ideas. So this house I tackled just to get an idea of what I wanted individual houses to be. And so this has got like this entire area here is where like the door and stuff is and it comes down and it starts to get wider and then down below this is actually like the super furnace thing that would actually power the blade uh that thing that's going to be down here uh that would power that spinning down here so that is what the individual houses like this would be held up by i just wanted to show you um and get your ideas like do you have ideas for what we should do here because I'm really kind of struggling uh, for what to do. I, I'm trying to think, but I, I really just am, I'm struggling. And I, I would do the floating island bit, but I also don't necessarily know if I want to anymore. The reason why this is open down here is because eventually there's gonna be a huge minecart system that comes in and wraps around and acts like it's loading this with coal or gunpowder, I think is what we're gonna be using. Um, it like acts like it's lo being loaded with gunpowder and it's like going around and powering everything. And that's what we're actually going to be getting into today. That's going to be the octacore. But let's go ahead and jump back into the real world and uh, I'll explain what we're going to be doing there. Now, before any of you ask, yes, we are still going to be doing stuff here. Um, but this is kind of more the time lapse stuff that I was planning on doing because I kind of reached a point where we're not going to be doing too much different here that it really needs to be uh built up we've built up all the different houses obviously i still need to go back through and like detail some of them um and we have the orchard to do but none of it's terribly exciting and i i, I don't really think it's going to be good video content for you guys i don't think you'll you'd enjoy it that much so what the plan is is to actually do this stuff in a time lapse so i can actually do some building and stuff um, and get some stuff done here but not have to bore you with the details because i mean it's just like filling in a ton of dirt and stone and making this place like mesh with the ground area around it um and so that's not very entertaining content i don't think for y'all so that's what why I, I want to do some more timeline space things so that we can still get some work done here. Um, but I wanted to get back into the steampunk city. I think that that'll be good. And uh, I'll obviously I'll update you if we do anything crazy here. But once uh, this all area gets done, um, I do have a pretty interesting idea that I'm working on that is gonna require quite a bit of digging down below and hollowing out a decent chunk of an area. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. But anyways, let me gather up my supplies here and uh, then we can go back over to the Steampunk City and uh, continue with building there. All right, so we are here back at the uh, Steampunk City, and uh, I wanted to explain what we're going to be making the Octacore. I have an idea now. I knew I wanted to make it some sort of power plant of some type, but I was not sure what type of power. And originally I was thinking XP could be a cool power source where we're getting like the XP from mobs, but... I had, I think, a better idea, and it's gonna be able to utilize all four different quadrants that we kinda have here, four entrances, I should say. So the idea was we were gonna have a creeper farm up in the air sky here in like this weird disc cylinder type thing was what I was thinking, and we're still gonna do that, I think. Um, it's still gonna make gunpowder, but the gunpowder is actually what's going to be powering this. Now, I don't want the creeper farm to be the actual, like, um, I don't want the creeper farm to be the source of gunpowder. I want to figuratively make 
gunpowder, if that's uh, a realistic expectation. Because I want TNT to actually be the thing that powers our city here. I want it to be TNT that is supplied and brought to all of the undersides of the uh, like floating mechanisms that we make um, to be able to keep them spinning and firing and stuff. Now, I did some research and figured out what goes into making gunpowder and also what goes into making TNT. Now, we're just going to go for TNT. We're just going to do the Minecraft thing. Sand and gunpowder, I think, is what it is. Um, and that is pretty fairly simple and straightforward. But the gunpowder was a challenge to figure out how we were going to explain that. And so I, I have come up with a quite an interesting idea that I think is going to be really, really cool. And it's going to allow us to build this building up in sections. I don't have my bow on me, so I can't take care of him. Um, so we're going to be building this up in sections. And for the first bit, um, we're going to be, I guess I should say, each quadrant is going to be one ingredient for gunpowder. Three ingredients go into making gunpowder. Now, some of you may be thinking, Pixel Brew, are you kidding me? Three ingredients? There's four quadrants, you idiot. What in the world are you going to be doing with the fourth quadrant? Well, that's going to be like a shipping and loading area. Um, loading and unloading, I suppose. So the first ingredient that goes into making gunpowder is sulfur. Now, sulfur is kind of impossible to get in Minecraft. It's not really something that makes, uh, would be really useful, I think, in this game. So I would really highly doubt that they're ever going to make sulfur an actual thing. In modded, I know you can get it, and it's, uh, it's a pretty combustible material. But what we're going to be doing is a manure sulfur plant. And one that deals with boiling water that has a mixture in it that creates sulfur. I, I did some research, and I am pretty, if I remember correctly, it was a little bit ago, but if I remember correctly, you can do a, wa a sulfur water heat treatment sort of thing. If you have uh, sulfur within the water and you boil the water and then it, it releases the sulfur or it evaporates the water and releases the sulfur, I don't remember exactly how it works. Um, but we're going to be having two different types of sulfur creation here. We're going to be making giant composters filled with, um, we're going to say, <laughs> I, I don't really know if we should call it a manure plant or if we should make it some sort of like animal feces plant, or if we should just say it's like decomposition of plants release sulfur. I don't know. Um, you, you let me know if you want to have a poop plant, we'll have a poop plant. It's okay. Uh, I am totally down for that. But the main show is going to be like these are going to be on the side, I think, creating the sulfur, feeding into. Whoa, it hasn't rained here in forever. Um, I think the what I'm going to do is have composters making giant composters making sulfur, and then they're going to feed all the sulfur into a vat that is a giant cauldron that will use soul sand and campfires and stuff to make it look like it's bubbling. And then we'll be doing that, uh, feeding into like a big glass tank, suspended like steampunky looking glass tank. I don't know, if I, I don't know, I have a vision, but I don't know even know if it's steampunky anymore. But that's gonna be how we do it. A water heat treatment of sul a sulfur mixture. The composter is gonna make the sulfur because of composting, I don't know. And, um, yeah, so that's how we get sulfur. So the next ingredient that we're going to be having is charcoal. Now, charcoal, fairly straightforward. Charcoal, boom. Um, I'm going to do two versions, I think, uh, of this. I think we're going to have a sort of a, a charcoal-y based one where we do a, um, a sort of coal processing plant that we have in the industrial side district side of things which is going to be this strip um and so we're going to have like a a uh, coal processing plant that brings coal here as well um but there's also going to be a charcoal plant right here that is just basically going to be massive massive furnaces that are burning large quantities of burnable material to get charcoal and so that is how we're going to get charcoal fairly straightforward not that hard to get now as i said before this this one in the back here is going to be just the storage area and it, that is not going to be too um crazy this is going to be 
there's going to be a lot of storage here, I suppose. All these diagonal bits, um, basically what I'm going to be doing is making this walled off right here. So we're going to have a wall that goes right along this line here. And then this huge hallway right here is going to actually, actually, this will be open, I think. We'll make this open, probably lower the ceiling a little bit or something like that. I don't really know. Um, probably lower the ceiling, not lower the ceiling, but make this ceiling extend out. And then that can be piping area for uh, 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 something, I don't know. Um, and so we'll make it so it feels a little bit smaller in here. This is going to be a large walkway. Um, and then this is going to be a giant open ring and I'll explain this in just a second, but just want to get a perspective here because while this is loading and unloading this entire area here, this diagonal bit on every single side is going to be like a warehouse storage for this place where they can keep stocks filled of all the materials because they have to keep this place flying. And so they have to have large quantities of always available. So essentially, this is going to be like the back stock area, this diagonal area. I'm just going to make it a giant warehouse. This There's going to be a wall right here, I think, um, all along this diagonal bit. And then it's going to be uh, on every single side. It's going to be just one absolutely massive warehouse. And I think that's going to be quite nice. Now this last section is gonna be a bit odd. Now you can't really see out because of all the acacia trees, but the last section is gonna be one of the more weird materials that we have to sort of outsource from the city. And I think that's okay. It's gonna be still city centric um, in terms of it's gonna be the steampunk style. Um, we're gonna make a giant quarry of this stuff and I think it's gonna be actually really cool. I have a, actually a really cool idea that I actually may wanna get into. This may be the first bit we tackle because we have to cover come up with the sourcing of it. So we're gonna have a, uh, what I would call uh, a freaking cool place. So we're gonna do some of this there. Uh, maybe we'll take a little bit of some bone block. We take a little bit of some carpet here just to do a little bit of that. Maybe we'll put a concrete block. And now you have no idea what this is. Um, but if you know what goes in to creating gunpowder, you'll know. This is saltpeter. And uh, I was originally, I think I'll use snow to actually do this a little bit more effectively because you can layer it up a lot better. Um, but I don't have any snow on me. So this I'll have to do for right now. Um, we're going to be using saltpeter as well. And now saltpeter is something you get. There's a process where you can evaporate it from uh, uh, salty water, saltpeter water. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's like potassium nitrate or something like that. And so what we're going to be doing, or sodium nitrate, at both of those, I think. So we're going to be making a sort of cave refinery area where people are mining out um, saltpeter or ish type stuff and it's also going to be dripping from the ceiling because it uh when water runs through it it drips out and kind of takes a little bit of saltpeter with it and then when it the water evaporates it leaves the salt behind and what we're going to also be doing is having a salt flats area in front of it where there's going to be pools forming that are water that evaporate in the sun and then salt comes out of it and I think that's going to be a really, really cool refinery process. It actually makes me super excited. I, I want to go and build it. And so I think this is going to be the first bit that we tackle. But before we can do any of this, we kind of need to get this a little bit more in order. Uh, ceiling, not so much because we're not going to be up there for quite a while. Um, but down down here and the structure, the, uh, yeah, it's not structurally sound at all like we've started putting in the giant pillars that'll go all the way up but i need to get that done um, i need to do a little bit more structural work to get it uh, set up and so that's what i'm going to be doing today uh, had a lot of explaining that i wanted to get done oh i forgot this little bit this little circle here um this central area i am going to make it like there's going to be like a little walkway here a little bridge walkway thing that goes across to this circle and essentially what's going to be happening is there's going to be a, 
uh, item transportation system, uh, waterway sort of thing that you can see. It's just going to be a group of items that just constantly flow around uh, just to make it look like the plant is actually processing stuff. So all of these materials are going to be going in and circulating around and uh, being filtered up into our creeper farm. The creeper farm is going to be a disc that is kind of is but is like spinning on the inside to churn everything together um, and make a refined um, dust of sorts for gunpowder. And then we will have our gunpowder for powering the entire city. So I'm going to get to work on the internal portion of this and I want to uh, get a lot of the structure stuff done and get this kind of laid out. Uh, may put up some of these diagonal walls that are going to be blocking off these uh, storage areas, which actually this one already is up a little bit because we had originally built that. I need to tear that down, but yeah, we'll do it later. Um, and uh, then, yeah, I think that will be kind of the plan for the episode a little bit of a preemptive planning then we're going to get into the saltpeter processing because i think that's gonna be sick now if you guys have any ideas to continue with this theme let me know but that is the place the plan in place for the octacore i think it's going to be really fun i think we're going to enjoy it. so without further ado i'm going to stop blabbing we're going to get to work and uh, build up some of these uh structures here all right, guys, so I have been doing quite a bit of work on the inside there. You can kind of see it. Um, but first, I wanted to introduce you to someone. I had another zombie villager spawn, so fix it, Felix. Wherever he is, he's over here. That guy right there that's in that little floating house has a new buddy. And I don't know, I, I just like building these tiny houses. Um, we should definitely do like a, a, a tiny village. I don't know. This kind of, it's just a fun style. It's fun to do tiny little dinky houses like this. But here is Swippy Longstein. I don't know why I chose that name, but I went through some of his trades uh, multiple times to try and get a good book. And we have an efficiency five. Now it's 440 emeralds, but he does have an infinite uh, trade where you can get three bookshelves which is three books and then you can trade one book for an emerald so you you do get a profit there um so it's not that bad um and so infinite infinite emeralds and an efficiency five book i am pretty happy with that now i have been doing quite a bit of work and um it's not going to look like a lot of work because it's just a bunch of beams and a big platform and then a little bit of a wall section. We're going to check out the creative world I've been working in to kind of plan this stuff out because this is such a big build. I need to actually plan things out or else it's going to go atrociously wrong. Um, so, yeah, this this is all I've been doing. Um, these beams are two by two. So essentially each one is like a giant taiga tree, <laughs> a giant mega taiga tree. Um, as you can see, I have them down there growing and uh yeah we have roughly this much wood left uh which is a fair amount won't last that long if i was building these beams but i think all of them are in now and this is adding a lot of structure to this build we're definitely going to have even more to support the top there uh there's a little little bit that is going to be going up to support the four corners of well corners in quotes of that circle um, but I didn't want to do that quite yet because I, I, I'm not wanting to tackle the top thing yet until we get like a creeper farm in uh, into this area. It's going to be probably in this middle section right here, like in between here and these beams. It's not going to be too terribly tall um, or big, I guess. It's not going to be like efficient, if you will, because to be honest, like we, we built a mob farm and that gives me plenty of creeper gunpowder stuff so this is more just explanation of how to actually um, make the city fly um, and I'm thinking that actually this entire building given that it's so massive is going to be entirely separate from the city meaning these streets are going to be like the only thing that is actually connected to the city I want I may have all uh, I may even have the streets be disconnected. Um, potentially, we may have the streets disconnected. I'm trying to think of 
logically thinking how, and I, I, I know, you have to put really big quotes around logically thinking. Um, but trying to think through if this fail, this octocore failed and came crashing down, how would the city survive? Like, it can't just be based around just this giant building providing everything because something could go wrong and the octocore could be shut down. They need to have alternative ways to stay afloat. Um, and so each individual building is going to have its own sort of system of staying afloat and or these streets are going to also be like because the main strip is going to be one long big chunk of of a piece um i think each building will probably have each building or every other building or something like that will have a windmill thing underneath um and then the uh, streets will have little ones underneath them as well just to make sure that if this failed that this these streets would be able to pick up the slack and uh, really buffer it out and make it so it can continue. Plus, there'll be like a backup backup gunpowder um, storage vat. So the uh, the octacore is purely for creating the gunpowder. It is not the like. It's the power supply in the sense that they need massive amounts of gunpowder made 24/7, 365 because of needing to power all the windmills and things that are actually keeping it afloat. So this is gonna have a ton of different um, windmills around it. There's gonna be some, I'm thinking maybe trying to do some diagonal ones. I'd have no idea how that would go, but I kinda wanna do some that could pull upwards and some that can kinda push upwards. So the bottom ones are gonna be pushing upwards. The uh, These corner bits here I'm thinking could be potentially areas where uh, there are some diagonal ones that are pulling it upwards um, just to make sure that there are all sorts of ways for this to stay up. Now, as you can see up here, I have been working on a little bit of a palette of the inside, and I think this is going to make this place look really, really cool. As you can see, we're working with a decent amount of acacia again, um, and the reason I'm going with spruce is twofold. One, it's easy to farm, and I knew I needed a, an absolute butt ton for this. Um, so I knew these beams were going to take a ton, and so I was like, I'm, I'm using spruce. Like, I, I'm, I'm not trying acacia wood on this, nuh -uh. But it also brings a spot of color in here, because if we did just stone, it would be very, very bland. Um, and now I'm working with trying to bring in this orange factor into the inside, but not make it overbearing because this orange is great when it's used in contrast with something like this has all this gray all around it it has this popping green down here and up here so it kind of swallows the orange a little bit and dies it down just a little if we did all of this in orange it would be insane so i'm trying to make it look a little more industrial look a little more plated almost um, and to also then bring in the orange but bring in a little bit of a gray palette to tone it down also, the spruce wood, the other reason why we're using it, because you can farm it easy and it's got a red tone to it. So it's got a warm tint, which helps bring uh, like bring in and calm down the acacia wood orange um, because acacia is such a, a warm color with it being such a, an orange that this ties in better, I think. And as you can see, I have a pretty big platform here and we can go up here. I think it's pretty well lit. Um, so this platform is gonna be a big storage area. So this this place is really gonna be all about backup supplies upon backup supplies of all sorts of different things. And the more and more I've been thinking about it, the more I'm thinking we're gonna have backup supply, this area up here, it's going to be primarily backup supplies for all of the different um, materials that go into this. So this primary area is going to be mainly just like backup storage for all sorts of stuff. But then this, these sections right here, we're going to have like one quadrant that is primarily like this side and this side of this little diagonal are going to be storage for charcoal. This is going to be storage for... Uh, the sulfur-based product, and this is going to be storage for the saltpeter. 
And so we're gonna have this area be uh, some storage stuff. And uh, why don't we jump into the test world because I think you're gonna be able to see a bit more of the vision. I don't have all the beams finished in the test world, but I have more of the design done. So I think you guys will be enjoying that as well. All right, so we're, we're here on the server, nobody else is on. And as you can see, this is, this is more the feel of what I'm wanting to go for. I'm thinking doing some, I've been playing around with some like interlocking bits um, and I've been starting to settle on this. I think this is gonna be really cool. So my original idea with this beam structure and these things being on all these connection pieces where all these beams connect up, um, was that there would be ways for the beams to shift around ever so slightly to give the building some leniency, like with the wind and stuff. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, ah, I feel like if the building is allowed to move, all the stone will break apart. So it actually needs to be pretty rigid and pretty like wind resistance, wind resistant in the sense that it, it doesn't move. And, um, so I kind of ixnayed that, but I came up with a decent gear design, which we're going into here. And so now the thought I'm thinking about doing is the reason why this original design came here is because I built this, and this was going with that sort of uh, the beams needing the shift idea. Um, but the idea I'm going with now is that there's gonna be this big crane thing that's like right here, that this is gonna be, a big crane and there's gonna have, there's gonna be like the, a big platform here. And why don't we just kind of fake, fake it till we make it. Um, and so there's gonna be a big platform here. And what I'm thinking is this is gonna be how they actually get product and stuff to get up there on the platform. And so it actually makes a giant platform where stuff can be stored. And this is obviously very rough, but just gets the idea done. So all the material can be put on here and this actually runs back and forth to lift up product to be able to set down here, be unloaded, then it can go back up. And so this is kind of like a, a pulley mechanism where there's a chain and, event, and I'd like to make it so that there's extra chain that's fed from the other side, which would explain why there's a hole over here. Now we are gonna have to be considerate of the beam right here. So this is probably gonna have to be flat like that. And we may have to actually just do this or something like that um, and make it more of a front based one. Uh, I'm not terribly sure. I have to, th I just have to think through. So this side is probably gonna have to be pretty weighted back here. Um, so it could be that this is very weighted back here. Um, and then this is the main unloading and loading area where all the product evens it out. Um, that's kind of my thought. I'm not really sure. I haven't totally thought through this, all of, all of this yet. I'm just thinking this is going to be like a big sort of rig where something can slide back and forth, um, like this. And this, uh, this would be mirrored on the other side. And then there would be sort of a chain, um, that can be wound through there and can kind of be fed into this so that it can be raised and lowered. Um, so this is the design carried through. Um, as you can see, bringing in a lot more spruce, making it a little bit more natural feeling. Um, it also makes sense to use wood because it is lighter than stone. So they probably, it's some way to be able to, you know, make it so this building isn't just astronomically heavy. But this is, this is what I've been doing. And um, yeah, there's a lot of work that's been going into it off camera, as you can see a lot of planning and stuff. Um, and that's, that's one of the big things. Like if you're, if you're doing something big, a big build like this, definitely do a lot of planning because if you don't, you're going to start thinking like you're going to get into it and then something's going to go wrong and you're just going to be really frustrated because something went wrong and your build's not turning out the way you want. Um, so this is why I always use a creative world to test things out and especially on big structures like this. So I hope you guys like this. I hope you have enjoyed. I know that's not a ton of progress really has been done in the real world, but as you can see, there is lots of plans and stuff. I wanted to make sure to show you this um, because I am gonna be doing a lot of this off camera because it's pretty boring to uh, grind all the materials and then also build it. It's not very uh, interesting, I would say, um, but I think it's gonna be cool. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this and making this building look really cool. Um, I just need to 
crack on with it and get a lot of the builds in. So I hope you guys have liked it. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have, leave a like in real life. Also, welcome all you new people from Flip's channel. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the lore side of things of the world. We are going to be building a lot more into that with the Elytras. One of you has already given me an idea with the Elytras, so thank you for that. I think it's a really cool idea. I also have a really cool idea how to bring in the Guardians um, into this. I, well, maybe not the Guardians, but a Guardian farm into this, so that's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have liked this. Leave a like in real life, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.